everybody mrs britain is on welcome to my channel praise the lord we are all alive and in a measure of good health thank you for viewing these videos i know that you are learning a lot and would you believe it i am learning something too every time i study i learn from the word of god i want to ha uh, invite you to have your bible close by as you know by now we study the word of god and we have begun with the book of the revelation and we are in lesson 24 opening of the sixth seal and the historicist interpretation the opening of the sixth seal so i want to uh, invite you to join in this study and i know that you will find the answers to all the questions you are asking let us pray thank you lord for your word your word feeds us and your word teaches us the way of salvation your word uh, introduces us to Jesus, the Lamb of God, the Savior of our lives. Please be with us now through the presence of the Holy Spirit as we study. May he give us understanding and a heart for Jesus so that each of us will surrender our lives to him and be saved in his kingdom. Amen and amen. Friends, in the fifth seal, we see God's people suffering injustice in a hostile world. And they cry out for God's intervention on their behalf. The time has come for God to intervene in answer to the prayers of his people. As we read in the following texts, let's see what is being revealed here. And we are going to look at Revelation chapter 6 verses 12 to 14 then we will go to matthew chapter 24 and then second thessalonians what is being revealed here i looked when he broke the sixth seal and there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth made of hair and the whole moon became like blood and the stars of the sky fell to the earth as a fig tree casts its unripe figs when shaken by a great wind. The sky was split apart like a scroll when it is rolled up and every mountain and island were removed out of their places. That was the sixth seal. Let us look at Matthew 24, verses 29 and 30. But immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers of the heaven will be shaken. And then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. Let's look at Matthew 24 verse 2. And he said to them, Do you not see all these things? Truly I say to you, not one stone here will be left upon another which will not be torn down. And our next text is 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verses 7 to 10. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those that do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints 
and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. The last three signs were foretold by Jesus in Matthew 24, verses 29 and 30. But immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. So those signs were recorded in Matthew chapter 24. Jesus Christ himself spoke of those signs. And we just read them in Revelation chapter 6. The darkening of the sun, the moon turning into blood, and the falling of the st stars from the sky. Friends, these signs were to occur near the end of the Great Tribulation. In 1798, as the harbingers of the second coming. Now let's look at Revelation chapter 7 verse 14. I said to him, My Lord, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones who come out of great tribulation, and they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. As with Christ's prophecy in Matthew 24, the sun, moon, and stars or meteors and the sky are literal here. So when we read of sun, moon, stars, the sky in Revelation chapter 6, they are literal. They are literal. The use of the words as or like paints a picture of an actual thing or event. The sun became black as sackcloth. The moon became like blood. And the stars fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its figs. Friends, the Christians in the Western world recognized the fulfillment of Jesus' words in the order of each of these signs. The Lisbon earthquake in 1755, the dark day in May 19, 1780, that was experienced in eastern New York and southern New England, and the spectacular meteoric shower over the Atlantic Ocean on November 13, 1833. The fulfillment of this prophecy in Revelation 6 verses 12 to 14 led to a series of revivals and to the realization that Christ's second coming was near. Friends, it's amazing. That prophecy when the sixth seal was opened, that prophecy was fulfilled to a T. Let me read again the fulfillment of that prophecy. There was the Lisbon earthquake in 1755. The dark day, that's, that was when the sun became dark, was on May 19, 1780. And that was experienced largely over in eastern New York and southern New England. And the spectacular uh, meteoric shower over the Atlantic Ocean occurred on November 13, 
Now follow on as I read the following text. Revelation 16 verses 15 to 17. Then the kings of the earth and the great men and the commanders and the rich and the strong and every slave and free man hid themselves in the cave and among the rocks of the mountains. And they said to the mountains and to the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the presence of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come. And who is able to stand? You see, friends, after these natural signs of the sun being darkened and the moon turning to blood and the meteoric shower, the next event is the second coming of Jesus. And the people cry, fall on us, hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne. Yes, friends. Let us turn to Isaiah chapter 2, verse 19. Then we will look at Hosea chapter 10, verse 8. And then Luke 23, verse 13. Isaiah 2. Men will go into caves of the rocks and into the holes in the ground uh, before the terror of the Lord and the splendor of his majesty when he arises to make the earth tremble. Hosea 10 verse 8 Also the high places of Avon, the sin of Israel, will be destroyed. Thorn and thistle will grow on their altars. They will say to the mountains, cover us. And to the hills, fall on us. Luke 23 verse 30 Then they will begin to say to the mountains, fall on us. And to the hills, cover us. Friends, the scenes portray people of all walks of life. The rich, the poor, the slave, the free, everybody. They're in a panic trying to hide from the terror of the upheaval at the coming of Christ. They are asking the rocks and mountains to cover them in order to protect them from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Revelation 6.16 6, The time has come for justice to be dispensed as Christ comes to be glorified in his saints. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes, friends. Under the sixth seal, the natural phenomena and the return of Jesus, the end of the wicked also occurs. And we get a description of the end of the wicked in Revelation chapter 19, verses 17 to 21. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried out with a loud voice, saying to all the birds which fly in mid-heaven, Come, assemble for the great supper of God, so that you may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of commanders, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of those who sit on them. And the flesh of all men, both free men and slaves, and small and great. And I saw the beast, and the kings of the earth, and their armies assembled to make war against him who sat on the, th the horse, and against his army. And the beast was seized, and with him the false prophet who performed the signs in his presence by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were thrown alive into the lake of fire which burns with brimstone and the rest were killed with the sword which came from the mouth of him who sat on the horse and all the birds were filled with their flesh. Friends, the scene 
in Revelation chapter 6 under the sixth seal concludes with the rhetorical question by the terror-stricken wicked. The great day of his wrath has come and the question comes, and who is able to stand? Let's read the question in the following text. First, we would look at Revelation chapter 6, verse 17. Revelation chapter 6, verse 17. For the great day of their wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? Then we look at Nahum chapter 1, verse 6, and then Malachi chapter 3, verse 2. Nahum chapter 1, who shall stand before his indignation? Who can endure the burning of his anger? His wrath is poured out like fire, and the rocks are broken up by him. Malachi chapter 3. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who shall stand before he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. The answer to that question, friends, who shall be able to stand when Jesus comes? The answer is given in Revelation chapter 7, verse 4. And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. Those who will be able to stand in that day are the sealed people of God. Friends, in Malachi chapter 3 verse 2, the question is, who can endure the day of his coming? And in Revelation chapter 7 verse 4, we read, the people of God, sealed with the Spirit of God, will be able to stand at his coming. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, friends, how would you answer the question? What biblical reasons can you give for your answer? Those who profess to be sons and daughters of God should represent him in character. Opportunity is now given us to form characters that will fit us for the entrance to the kingdom of heaven, those who keep the commandments of God will have a right to the tree of life and enter in through the gates into the city. Friends, how is it with you? How would you answer that question? Will you be among those who are sealed with the Spirit of God to enter the city? Will you? Friends, in love, God has given us a law that we may know and put away those traits of character that cannot be tolerated in heaven. No one can enter there who is charged with robbery, adultery, evil speaking, or false dealing. For this would lead to another war in heaven. The law of God was given to lead men away from these practices that their characters might be fashioned after the character of God. Friends, the law of God calls us to love, to love God and to love others as Jesus loves them. So who shall be able to stand? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts shall be able to stand. God's grace, friends, God's grace is sufficient for you and me. Now let us look at the second part of our study. We are going to delve into the historicist interpretation of Revelation chapter 6 verses 12 to 14. Let us read the text again. Revelation chapter 6 verses 12 to 14. And it reads, I looked when he broke the sixth seal. 
and there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth made of hair and the whole moon became like blood and the stars of the sky fell to the earth as a fig tree casts its unripe figs when shaken by a great wind. The sky was split apart like a scroll when it is rolled up and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Friends, these apply to events in the relatively recent past as I already shared with you. The text describes two earthquakes separated by a series of heavenly signs. The first earthquake was fulfilled by the Lisbon earthquake in 1755. This event was followed by the darkening of the sun and the redness of the moon in the year 1780. And this was viewed particularly in Eastern New York and uh, New England. The falling of the stars, the meteoric shower occurred in 1833. The complete disruption of both sky and the surface of the planet was seen as still future. Because there's another earthquake. The sky is split and rolled back as a scroll. And we read just a few minutes ago that this event accompanies the second advent of Jesus. Now, two reasonable questions have arisen about this way of reading Revelation 6 verses 12 to 14. The entire passage, we're going to look at the first one. The entire passage is governed by the opening of the phrase, when he opened the sixth seal. So the most natural grammatical reading is that all the events in the passage occur at the same time, not separated by decades. Okay? Number two, are the earthquakes the sun, the moon, the stars to be taken literally, or are they symbols of some sort of spiritual malady? Both of these objections can be met by close observation of the Greek text. First, the earthquake of Revelation 6 verse 12 does not occur at the same time as the earthquake in Revelation 6 verse 14. The earthquake in Revelation 6 verse 12, that great earthquake, the Greek word is seismos migas. That earthquake in Revelation 6 verse 12 is parallel to the earthquake in Revelation eleven thirteen. Again, the Greek seismos migas. I'm going to put it on the screen. This earthquake takes place prior to the close of probation, which happens at the beginning of the seventh trumpet, Revelation 10, verse 7. Revelation 10, verse 7. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he is about to sound, then the mystery of God is finished, as he preached to his servants, the prophets. So the first earthquake of Revelation 6.12, we're looking at the historicist interpretation. The first earthquake in Revelation 6.12 is different, separated by decades, to the second earthquake in Revelation 6 verse 14. On the other hand, the moving of every mountain and island as recorded in Revelation 6.14 is parallel to Revelation 16 verse 20. And this is well after the close of probation. It says, Revelation 16 verse 20, And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. So, 
if the two earthquakes are separated by an undetermined period of time, it is reasonable that the other events of Revelation 16, sorry, of Revelation 6, 12 to 14, could also be fulfilled at different times. So there were two earthquakes. One earthquake and then a series of natural phenomena, the sun being darkened, the moon being turned to blood, and the stars falling from heaven. Okay? And then in the same text, there is a second earthquake, and every mountain and island moved out of its place. Two earthquakes. Friends, these two earthquakes are separated by decades. Second, there is a threefold like or as in verses 12 and 13. And I think we went through that already. Um, as black as sackcloth, you know, like a tree dispensing of his figs in an untimely manner. And the word for like or as in the Greek is hos, H-O-S. In Greek, this conjunction regularly introduces symbolism, which works best when what comes before the horse is literal. So the actual sun became black horse sackcloth, like sackcloth. So the sun is literal, okay? And it became black. And the moon became like blood. The descriptions are symbolic. But the heavenly activities are real. Three earthly phenomena. The Lisbon earthquake of 1755. That's the first, the first earthquake in Revelation chapter 6. Then the dark day in 1780 see how many decades have, have passed and the so, the moon turning to blood in that same year and the meteoric shower of 1833 they are almost 100 years of history right beginning from 1755 with the lisbon earthquake going right up to the meteoric shower of 1833 almost 100 years for the fulfillment of prophecy you may ask what is the spiritual payoff of a historicist interpretation of the sixth seal how does the comparison with matthew 24 help or hurt the interpretation how a few English translations begin Matthew 24 verse 30 by at that time, associating all the heavenly signs with the second coming of Jesus, which is still future. But the Greek simply has and, kai, k-a-i. So the original text is as open-ended as Revelation 6 verses 12 to 14 turned out to be okay so let's read it again let's read revelation 6 12 to 14 again i looked when he broke the sixth seal and not at that time the greek says and kai k-a-i and there was a great earthquake when that seal was broken and the sun became as black as sackcloth, literally. The moon became like blood, very red. And the stars of the sky fell to the earth as the fig tree casts its unripe figs when shaken by a great wind. Look at what comes next after these natural phenomena. The sky was split apart like a great scroll when it is rolled up and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. 
a second earthquake. Friends, there's no need to be confused here. Matthew 24 supports the historicist interpretation of Revelation 6. The events actually happened in history. 1755, the Lisbon earthquake. 1780, the darkening of the sun and the bloodying or the redness of the moon, the unusual redness of the moon. 1833, the meteoric shower. The historicist view of prophecy assures us that one, God is in control of history. Two, God's mission for the end of time and his end time people is clear. And three, God cares deeply for his people, vindicating the martyrs and protecting as many as possible in the satanic chaos just before Jesus' return. Hallelujah. Friends, as we have studied Revelation chapter 6, we have looked at all five themes. One, the four horses and the four horsemen, which portray the progress of the gospel and the consequences of its rejection. Two, the main Old Testament background of the four horses involves the curses of the covenant. Three, the judgments portrayed in Revelation 6 affect the people of God. For the souls under the altar, that passage does not address the state of the dead. And five, the historicist interpretation of the sixth seal is supported by the text. Friends, in scripture, there is assurance that God always cares for his people. That in history itself, he is ever present to sustain them. And that in the great eschatological denouement, he will give them full vindication and an incomprehensibly generous reward in life everlasting. Indeed, as Revelation emphatically points out, the living one, the one who conquered death and the grave, as we read in Revelation 1 verse 18, the living one will never forsake his faithful followers and that even when they suffer martyrdom, they are victorious with the crown of life awaiting them. Friends, I will close with the same question at the conclusion of chapter 6. Revelation 6 verse 17. Who shall be able to stand? Friends, God has a people who will be able to stand in the very last days. When the upheaval on earth will be at its greatest. Just as Jesus faced his last days before Calvary, the followers of Christ will likewise be dedicated to their calling. Today, today, you and I should be preparing for that momentous time. Friends, will you join me in preparing to stand in that day? Will you? Will you? I pray that you will. As we close today, I know this was a serious a message, lesson, and it really caused you and I to think because some of those signs have already been fulfilled. And the next momentous occasion, according to Revelation 6, will be the second advent of Jesus. When that great earthquake will occur, the sky will be split and will roll back as a scroll and Jesus will come. We will continue our study in Revelation 
And so I want to invite you to subscribe to my channel, Mrs. Britain is On. Hit the notification bell so that every time I post a video, you will be alerted. Tell someone, tell someone how you are learning so much from the Word of God and invite them to study also. And remember to write your questions and comments down below. You know, when you write your questions, or if you write your questions and, and, and make your statements, then it gives me an indication that you are learning and you want to know what the Word of God says. Uh, I would also be placing all the, uh, the, uh, the links of my previous videos in the description below so that you can go back and view what you have missed. Our next lesson will be on the sealed people of God, the restraining of the winds. We just read those who will be able to stand will be those who are sealed by the Holy Spirit. So who are th those sealed people of God? We will study that in our next lesson. I must say special thanks to all those of you who are viewing the videos and all those who have subscribed. May God bless you as you continue to learn from the Word of God. Let us pray as we close. Almighty Father, Creator of heaven and earth, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for Jesus. One day we know he will return. We want to be among those who are sealed and who will be able to stand in the face of the Lamb. Thank you for your word, O oh God. May this lesson touch the hearts of those who listen and view. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Until next time when Mrs. Britton is here.